Okay, today class we're at the Yavapai College Vineyard here in Clarkdale, and I have Tim Hudnell here who's a student going through the viticulture program but actually works for the college. He has some uh, extra information to share with us. So we're going into the pump house, and the pump house here, and some storage tanks there, and let's go in and see what Tim Hudnell has to say to us about how water moves through the system. Hey Tim. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so this is cottonwood reclaimed water. It comes up from cottonwood uh, plant about 200 feet down. It's a six inch line. So it's quite an undertaking to get six inch of water at about 45 pounds of pressure up here. Uh, but it gives us everything we need. And this is all basically a redundant system just for emergency backup. We uh, always have a chance of something going wrong and this will buy us enough time in case there's a Now, issue. once we get up here, this is our last air relief and it's gone to a four inch off the main steel six inch. It's gone to plastic. This is our last air relief. Now, you'll see here that it splits two ways. This is an electronic device with a fill control on the outside water tanks to make sure that they are constantly full of backup water. So, as normal, when we're not using it, we save money on electricity and all that. We shut off the tanks and we just run the city water as much as we can and use their pumps and their pressure. When you say city water, are you talking about city reclaimed water? Reclaimed water. Okay. Right. This is, there is no uh, tap water available on site. So we come up, we come through here first. This is a basket filter. Because it's such a tremendous large construction project and welding of the pipes and, and all the debris that could have gotten in. Some of, the, some of the pipe is buried 12 feet down on some of the runs back there. So it has caught a lot of dirt and debris. If you look in there, you'll see that you can catch little chunks of gravel. We want to get all that bigger stuff out before it gets here. And that's what this is. Now again, once, you, once we do everything, almost everything is redundant. So we have two pumps. And the pumps are set to alternate, and we only use these when we have no water pressure from the city of Cottonwood. And these would pump our tanks out to the field at about 40 pounds of pressure. So 40 pounds of pressure on a four inch line is enough to water quite a large area. But right now, we've, we've got them shut off because we're just using the city, saving money, saving electricity, and we're just running their system on out. Once we get to this point, we have a filter again, and this is a 200 micron filter, and it's set to automatically flush, and when the water is pretty clean, and we're using it a lot, we don't have to get in here and clean the filter very often, but still, we have a filter that we clean ever so often, and if you were to look at that closely, that's a very small, fine 200 micron filter. But if you think if you're trying to prevent emitters from clogging, you want that fine filter. Leaves here, heads out to our system. If you notice again, we've done it. We have two heating and cooling units to keep this room nice and uh, uh, functioning properly. The pumps won't ever get overheated and the pipes will never okay, freeze. Okay, so again, redundancy, redundancy. We have two tanks, not just one, but uh, we have the monitors in, in the one tank. We also have a, um, a sight glass to help us look and see how full they are that floats up and down on the floating system. We can isolate out each tank. Everything's plumbed externally. Overflow. Um, here's our shot. Here's our sight glass. Now, normally these would be very full. All the, so you'd see that this would be all the way to the ground. That, that would mean that the tanks are completely full. But right now I'm doing a little bit of work, so I'm going to drain this down and work on a filter in there. So this is again one of the easiest ways. It's just on a float on the other side. As the more water goes in on down. Very easy. It doesn't have to be fancy electronic reading system. And you did mention the two tanks, so we have two of these very large storage tanks. And you mentioned these tanks would specifically be for when you run out of water? Emergency. Emergency water supply. Okay. Um, and that has only happened a couple of times so far, and it's been working really well. But uh, uh, when we got challenges from construction sites also putting a high demand on the city of Cottonwood, we started to run a little bit low. And so what we could do is use these during that period of time of peak demand and then just refill.
fill them later that day. Just okay, and last but not least, if you'll look, this is the uh, drain for the flushing of our 200 micron filter. And it runs, I've got it set to automatically flush every four hours regardless, but it also has a pressure compensator. And how it works is as the filter starts to get clogged, it senses the difference between the pressure inside the filter and outside the filter. It tells it it's time to flush, and it flushes out, and it flushes about four gallons. Um, and this would not be grade A plus because of if it's built up that amount. But it's still relatively clean and uh, safe to flow into the field. Show me that tool you got in your hand there. Okay. There's the emitter puncher. Emitter puncher. So today we got Ted Faring here. He manages the vineyard for YC. What's going on today, Ted? Well, today we're putting punches in the poly and, and uh, putting the emitters in. And every once in a while, mistakes will be made. And for mistakes, we have goof plugs. So say it again. What's the word? This is a goof plug. Goof plug. And this goof plug will fix at least temporarily. So the students put a, uh, a punch in a bad mark. Okay. And so the simple thing is just to take this and force it in. And that takes care of the bad. Well, <laughs> <laughs> typical water management. We'll get that fixed so, now. So now that we have flow, we'll take another goof plug out and try this again. This is real world, Ted. We like this. This is real world. So. Man. So you think that first one just didn't seat in there? It just good? didn't seat in really good. Sometimes with the goof plugs, it's hard to know until you let it go. But it stays in for a few seconds usually. And, and there's no flow virtually whatsoever coming out. That's a good sign that we can move on. Tell me real quick about okay, can the, uh, the, the choice of emitters and kind of what we have here in the layout that we're doing today. So we're putting an emitter on one foot on each side of the future vine location. These are half gallon emitters, so each vine will get a gallon of water an hour when we turn the water, the irrigation system on. And what's the spacing? It's one foot from the on each side of the vine. So the vine is marked here, going right into the hole, and we have an emitter one foot on each side. Okay, and you got these button drippers here. Yeah. Okay. And they're and they're going to put out. Well, they're they're officially let, listed at two liters an hour, four liters, a little over a gallon an hour for each vine. So every vine that will be planted here in in a week will get one gallon per vine. Per per hour. Per hour. Per hour while the while the irrigation system is uh, charged. Generally, this time of year, we're shooting for 12 to 15 gallons of water every week on the on every single line, all 11,000 plus. All right, thank you, Ted.